Now that we've traced out our pattern, we cut it from our paper, and now we have our volar wrist control orthosis that's ready to just apply to the hand to the patient to see an approximate fit. So we'll lay that over just below our distal palmar crease around our fifth metacarpal, and this is going to be our dorsal piece right here. And that looks like it's going to be a good fit. One of the things, the common mistakes we make with these volar wrist control splints is make sure our thumb hole is large enough to encompass the whole thumb and the thenar eminence. One of the common problems we see is a lot of pressure with the orthosis over the dorsal base of the first metacarpal at the trapezium at the level. So we want to make sure to give ourselves a greater than 50% um, opening on this uh, thumb hole cutout here. And we'll show that as we apply that orthosis to the patient in just a moment. Now we're ready to go ahead and transfer this pattern onto our pre-cut piece of material and we're ready to apply the orthosis. There are two different ways to apply the pattern to the material. One way is you can take the pattern and directly apply it to the material and trace around it. Another way is to place your material in the hydroculator for about 20 seconds to allow the material to get halfway uh, pliable. Then when you take that material out, don't take the water off. You'll pull that material out because that water allows the pattern to adhere directly to the material. Then at that point, it will become tacky and you can begin to cut the pattern right out. And you make short cuts, pull the scissors through the material. And that allows you to have a nice, consistent pattern. What I'd like to show you next is just a little trick and a little tip on how to get this thumb hole cut out. We know this is an area that's a big concern most of the time, so what I like to do is just heat this material up partially, outline my hole, and then take the scissors and poke this through that material so that it creates a space to begin to, to, to start to cut from. Then from that point, I'll stick those scissors in and create my hole. And there I have my thumb hole cut out. Some people will start that with a hole punch. Uh, some people will use a, a, a heat gun just to get it soft and then push the splint, push these scissors through there. But this is an effective and efficient way to do that as well. Now we're all ready to apply the orthosis to our patient. Now that we have a completed pattern right here, we're going to apply the material or put the material in the um, orthotic pan, the splint pan. And while that's heating up, we're really going to talk about positioning our patient for success. So one of the most important things is to make sure that the patient is in a comfortable, in a comfortable position that you want them in and also that you're in a position for success and have control over that particular patient. So what I'll do is I'll place the arm or the extremity in a position where the, that I'm looking to uh, achieve with the orthosis. Whether I want to have a little bit of wrist extension, whether I want it neutral, whether I want a little more flexion or ulnar deviation, position the patient where you want them first. Whether you use uh, an elevator, a, a pillow, a towel, whatever that may very well be. Um, the thumb position or whatever you're looking for at that point. Um, one of the things also you want to make sure, especially when you have your station, your splint station set up, is to be face to face with the patient so they can see exactly what's going on. You can see their facial expressions at the same time to make sure that either you're applying just the right amount of pressure or the material is not too tight at the same time. For all intents and purposes today, we're just going to show this setup so that you can see from the camera. So by this point now, my material should just be, up, just be about ready. What this is is eighth inch aquaplast, so this has 100% memory. So we're going to show you in a second how to roll out that thumb. And what we'll do is we'll take that split material out of the water at, at this time. So we can see now this material that was opaque is now clear. So what I do is I wipe this material off, or wipe the material off so it's not wet anymore. Be careful with aquaplast because it is very sticky and if it touches its edges touch, then it will stick together. So at this point, what I do is I roll my thumb out here and I want a nice edge. So I roll that thumb out 
And then already, I have this material ready to apply to our, to our patient. Is this too warm? Okay. So I apply that material. I begin to conform and gently caress the material following the creases and the position I want the patient in. You can use gravity. You can also use an ACE bandage or any kind of wrap to help. So in this position here, I bring my thumb around and it helps to stretch out this material to make sure. And then sometimes, in some cases, it does have a tendency to shrink, contract just a little bit. So I'll constantly monitor that as we go along. And again, the key is to make sure it conforms to the creases, the arches, for a nice, custom, comfortable fit. Now that our pattern is cooled, we're going to reapply to the patient. We're going to trim down some of our areas that we find are going to be troublesome. We want to make sure to go below the distal palmar crease to allow those MCPs to flex appropriately. We'll make sure that our pan, if it's too high, is about half the width of the forearm. That looks pretty good over there. And to trim any excess, excess off material that may uh, impede or cause issues down the road. I always round my corners. Now I'm going to reapply the orthosis to make sure the MCPs have good motion. And now I'm ready to apply my strapping. When you reapply the orthosis, one of the things you want to frequently do is check and recheck your orthosis to make sure it's a comfortable fit for the patient. So we'll reapply to make sure there's unimpeded MCP motion and that they can do uh, function actually within your orthosis. Can you touch your small finger? Okay. And that should be a good amount right there for that patient to be able to function daily. Now what I'm going to show you very quickly is to go ahead and how to smooth off your edges and put a little flare at the proximal end of the orthosis. This is something we're not going to continue to go over every orthosis, but it's something that can be used and generalized for every splint or every orthosis that you make. So what I do is gently insert the material into the, into the water and just move that water back and forth and then apply just a little flare to the bottom and do the same with all the edges. I can run my thumb around each edge to smooth those so that it won't only cause any skin breakdown or any pressure areas on the patient. I'll go ahead and wipe that down, then reapply, and we're ready for our strapping. This is another example of a uh, custom fabricated uh, circumferential orthosis that I use in my clinic quite often. And our physicians and hand surgeons have found this to be very effective for our patients, and our patients find it to be very comfortable. So what it is is I take a six by nine sheet of uh, Either you use 16th inch or 332nds aquaplast, microperforated. And what I do is as I, I look, this is going to be radial based. So I'm going to trim about an eighth of an inch off each side. In the middle of that, I'm going to place a little hole for my thumb piece. So what this is going to do is go over the thumb, down around the thenar eminence, and it's going to come along the ulnar border and pinch together over here. I'll let that dry, snap that off, and trim it down. And there we have a very quick radial base circumferential wrist support. What you can do, what you can do also here is apply it because this only takes about 30 seconds for this to become malleable. I'll go ahead and get my thumb hole set up again. Put that through the material. Trim that off and create a thumb hole. And 
This will go back in the water. And again, I'll position my patient how I want them, whether it be wrist neutral, whether it be wrist extension, I'll make sure they can either oppose to the thumb and small finger or whatever it may be. I'll place them in the position I want them and I'll be ready to go. I'll clean up my station in the meantime, set things up and have them ready once this material is ready. Here we are, we're ready to go. I'm gonna apply this over the thumb, allow it to conform. And what I do is I bring it to the ulnar border, tack it together. I do the same all the way down through. I'll then conform here. I can choose at this point to roll that material back to clear the thenar eminence and the base of the thumb. And when you press on this material here, you'll tack it to the orthotic material. I clear my distal palmar crease. And I'll wait for that to cool. Once the material is cooled, what I do is I trim down this ulnar border edge here and be ready to pop the, the weld of the material. I place my fingers in here, pull this off, and begin my trim process. Round my edges, reapply the material, and look from here. What I'll do here in this place, I'll place a strap here, a strap here, and a strap here. One quick tip with this material, I like the material, it's light. It does not edge very well because of the perforations, so what I may do is take a, an edging material to go around here to make sure that, that there isn't gonna be any sharp edges that'll press into the patient at the same time. So at that point, here we have an alternative radial-based circumferential wrist control orthosis that will allow for a better airflow and support for our patient. Now here we go, we're gonna use a pattern pre-cut for a wrist cock-up, wrist orthosis. Here's my thumb hole already prefabricated. I'm gonna roll that orthosis hole out Opening that up here, this is using Polyflex. I'm gonna wrap that material volarly, open that thumb hole up, and apply the material. You're gonna gently caress the material. I'm gonna to have to trim that down below the distal palmar crease. Ensure that I have, my borders are high enough not too low. Can you touch your small finger for me? Back, thank you. And this is a material where you might need some more rigid support. Has great conformability, but not very good memory. So maybe in the, uh, a sample of a distal radius fracture coming out after an open reduction internal fixation. What I'll do at this point is I'll go ahead and use my grease marker and my grease pen to mark out my key points that I need to trim. And I'll also go ahead at this point and mark where I want to place my Velcro. At this point, my material is almost hard enough to trim. I'll pull this off and I'll begin to cut down the orthosis. 
while it's still soft enough to move. I'll reapply. I have an appropriate fit here. My borders are good. I'll take down my distal palmer crease. She's able to flex okay. The MCPs aren't impeded. Now I'll begin to go ahead and just like it was done beforehand, smooth off my edges. And this stuff, this material edges very well. Take away any hard edges, any sharp points that may cause skin maceration and breakdown. Wipe the orthosis down. And now I'm ready to go ahead and apply my, stra my strapping. I have my pre-cut Velcro all ready to go. I could flare my edge a little more. There's my proximal edge. My wrist crease. My owner border. And my radial piece. I'll go ahead and apply my strapping, following the contours of the forearm, trim off my excess. That way all Velcro is covered. My two and three quarter inch strap around the wrist, that conforms very well. And there I have my final product for a um, pattern for the wrist control orthosis. So what I want to do now is just give you a list of some common conditions that might be used and this most, most, be most appropriate for this wrist control orthosis, whether it be post distal radius fracture, whether it be carpal tunnel syndrome, various tendinopathies or tendinitis. And this is just a few conditions, but is not limited to these few here. What's most important is you should evaluate each patient uh, specifically, know what the physician might have based on any post-operative precautions uh, and the needs of the patient in particular. So, and then various materials can be used for this wrist control orthosis, whether it be 16th inch microperforated aquaplast, Taylor splint, easy form, based on the diagnosis and the amount of control that's needed for each and every patient.